Hello, people. So um, I've had the the opportunity to watch the documentary, What is a Woman by Matt Walsh. And the folks over at The Daily Wire, um, they produced it. And Matt Walsh hosted it. The movie shows uh, Walsh asking everyone from uh, PhDs to MDs to licensed therapists to politicians um, to people on the street if they can define what a woman is. Uh, what ensues in the video is is pretty disturbing, and and Walsh goes uh, on to do a pretty good job of exposing the confusion behind the gender revolution. And if you're watching, I'm John Noyes. This is to the point where we look at culturally relevant issues or topics from a distinctly Christian worldview. And today we're going to use the the What Is a Woman documentary as a springboard of sorts into uh, a deeper conversation about gender and sexuality. Um, and this, uh, to the point, it's going to be a little, I think, probably longer than normally. Normally, I try to stay within 15 minutes of commentary and then answer questions. But I think it's uh, worthwhile uh, to spend a little bit more time on this. Um, so it's, it, it, I think it's going to be worth it. But uh, uh, I want to remind you guys also to remember to add your comments into the section, uh, whatever is relevant section, the comments section. Um in your browser or however you're watching this. And I'll get to the comments after uh, this maybe 17 or 18 minute commentary here. I've got to get coffeeed up for this one, guys. You know, um, uh, the documentary, if you want to watch it, and I, and I am recommending that, that we all watch it, is on the Daily Wire website and app. I downloaded the app to my, my smart TV and I, I watched it on my television uh, three or four times actually. Uh, for, in preparation for this, the the description for the movie in the on the website on the Daily Wire website says, "It's the question you're not allowed to ask." The documentary, they don't want you to see. Join Matt Walsh on his often comical yet deeply disturbing journey as he fearlessly questions the logic behind a gender ideology movement that has taken aim at women and children. Watch what is a woman now. And like I said, you can stream that guys on the Daily Wire websites behind a paywall. Uh, in my opinion, um, it's worth it. And uh, we should be paying for this content, by the way. You shouldn't be searching for it for free. You should be supporting uh, the people who do it if you gain from it, especially. Um, well, after watching it a, a number of times, I have to say I'm I'm not disappointed. I think Walsh does uh, a lot very, very well. Um, <clears throat> uh, as, as, as with any film, though, I'm kind of left... Uh, wondering what's left on the on the cutting room floor. Uh, just for context sake, I, I'm always curious as to how accurate the interviews were. But for the most part, I feel like the the producers and Walsh here were fair and, and did well to show all the discussions that he had in the proper context while um, showing the, the, the logical conclusions to the ideologies driving the idea that we can somehow define uh, gender ourselves. The majority of um, the, the documentary, during the, the majority of the documentary, Walsh uh, interviews doctors and experts in, in the field of sexuality and gender, a, a politician or two, and the general public. Uh, each interview culminating in the question, can you tell me what a woman is? Um, and I'm just going to dive right in here. The, the, we've all probably seen that, uh, that interview that he did or the segment he did on the Dr. Phil show. He includes some of those clips in his documentary. Um, and while on that show, Walsh, uh, the Dr. Phil show, Walsh rightly points out, and I quote, no one who espouses the left wing ideology can explain what they mean when they use the term woman. They have to in, in, uh, evoke the term in order to define the term, which is circular, which we're going to get to in a minute. Uh, one of the, the things that that stuck out to me came as as time and time again, people would ask Walsh why he even cares about what someone else chooses to say about themselves. This is relativism and in, 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 at its core. And again, we're going to get to that in a second. Uh, so, But I do want to ask a question. Why do we care about this? Why, 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 just, why not just let bygones be got bygones? You know, uh, you do you, boo, is how we expe uh, 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 like express it today in the culture. Uh, you do you, I'll do me. Why not just accept what other people say about themselves is actually directly one question that one of the doctors that uh, Walsh interviewed asked him, just, just why do you care? You know, first, there's two reasons. The first is that language matters. Uh, this is a point Walsh made again and again. Um, and and he, I point to the clip, if you watch the video, he uh, points to the clip from his appearance on the Dr. Phil show. He po points out that there's been an ongoing evolution of language 
which has has muddied the conversation. You know, earlier in the documentary, Walsh, uh, Walsh rather, interviews uh, Patrick, and I'm going to mispronounce this name. Um, it's G R Z A N K. Grzanka. He's a he's a social scientist at the University of Tennessee, and and we see why language is so important. You see, Walsh asks if gender and sex are the same thing, and after a a really long explanation, like kind of just going in circles, the question is is almost left completely unanswered, at least uh, muddy and ambiguous. And Walsh again asks, "Are gender and sex two different things? Yes or no?" And the the professor asks, "Why are you, why do you even ask the question? Why do you even care?" And Matt says he he un, he he wants to understand reality, and he kind of points the professor to that's kind of your job as a professor, you know, to be pointing to truth. And the professor goes on to say, um, <clears throat> excuse me, that we should just let people define their own realities. Uh, and then and Walsh, again, he, he was great in a lot of this. Um, I, I agree with probably 90% of what was happening in this documentary. I mean, Walsh did a fantastic job. Um, and then Walsh again and again, when he was faced with this type of relativistic claim, you know, let them define their own reality. He says, I, I, I just want to get to the truth. And then listen to what this professor from, from the University of Tennessee says. He, he says, I'm troubled by that language. He says, getting to the truth, this is, this is his exact words quoted in my notes. Getting to the truth sounds deeply transphobic. You know, the word, he, he goes on to say that the word truth is condescending and rude. And like, I don't know what context, like I'm, I'm always worried about context. I want to be fair, but I don't know what context makes that statement uh, a, a good statement. And then that's not it. The, this professor from the University of Tennessee, the social scientist, he, he, he then says things like, uh, why don't you tell me your truth? Why are you concerned with when someone else, someone tells you uh, they're male and, and you don't believe them? Why aren't you believing them? Just believe them. And then Walsh finally asks that question, what is a woman? And then he's, he's faced with more questions from the professor. Why, why do you ask that question is what the professor says. Uh, what other kinds of answers have you gotten in the course of your, your work on this movie, he asks. And then Walsh doesn't really put up with any of it. He just kind of looks at him and just says, well, but you're a social scientist. This is what you do. You define these things. What is a woman? And then uh, the answer that he gets ultimately is a, it, it's a person who identifies as a woman. And it, it's a circular argument. And Walsh points that out. And he does a really great job here. Um you know, and then he's accused of of wanting to only seek in a what and I quote an essentialist definition. And at that point, in my notes, I have uh, ugh, like it's just it, I I can only imagine how kind of frustrated Walsh is because as I'm watching this, I'm really frustrated too. You see, the reason why is because it's our first point, right? Language matters, right? When language allows us to to communicate about the world around us with with other people. When language loses its meaning, confusion ensues. And, and Matt Walsh does a really great job of, of showing exactly uh, why this expert um, is confusing the situation and, and as, he, as he continues to talk into circles. So he's showing why language matters, Matt Walsh is, as he's kind of exposing this, this professor who's supposed to be an expert in the field, just sits there and talks in circles trying to explain uh, the, the, their own words, mainly the word woman. What, when you say woman, what do you mean by that? And they can't know uh, what's a woman. Uh, well, a woman is a woman. Well, we need more than that. Right. And then we're going into the definition a little bit, but so that's, that's like one of the interviews that really stuck out for this, this, uh, university of Tennessee pr professor. And, uh, and the first, the first thing to remember is that language matters. Uh, the second reason why we should care about this is uh, sometimes uh, the, the, actually yeah, this is something that Matt, Matt Walsh gets uh, gets gets right, but I think he could have done better. Um, point, pointing this point out, um, when someone asks why we even care, they're basically asking us to to just accept something. Um, why why don't you just accept what I'm saying? Is, is kind of what they're saying to you. They're asking that question, and it seems to me that these people being interviewed are used to just having what they say accepted. So uh, should you just accept what they what they're saying? Uh, well, absolutely not. And this is this is the main point, right? We, we don't simply accept moral things, right? We don't simply accept moral things. Issues of sexuality and gender are not benign to to others or even to ourselves. the The issue is a moral issue. There there are some things in the world that are actually right and wrong. And and if so so if issues of of gender are not morally questionable, then then we should live and let live, you know, but if it is 
morally questionable. If there are moral issues, um, or if or if uh, if something is is shown to be dangerous, uh, we have a, a responsibility, an obligation to defend the truth, to move towards that. And Walsh, he does do a good job um, in pointing out the harm done to people and especially children as they seek to, to surgically alter their bodies to align with their self-perceived gender identities. And, and for me, this was actually the, probably the most impactful part of the, the documentary. And it came in kind of the last third. Uh, there, he interviewed, uh, Walsh interviewed this guy, Scott Nugent, um, who heads up an organization now uh, trying to help people understand this issue. And he's a biological woman. This is how he describes himself a biological woman who transitioned to a man. And when he was speaking, he actually made it extremely clear, exact words. And I quote, I will never be a man. And, and he went on to point out the, the truth is that that medical transition is experimental and it's harmful. And this is, this is that second point. Uh, there is a moral component. It's harmful to people. And we need to be uh, stepping into that because it seems to me, as far as like Walsh's interviews with the experts, uh, they never, they actually deny harm. You know, and this the, this guy uh, Nugent he actually points out that the only long term study done on uh, kids, adolescents who who use one of or more methods of uh, um, transitioning to another gender, uh, whether it be hormone blockers or surgery, or anything the the only long term study that studies the effects of these things actually points out that um, that they become suicidal, extremely suicidal, seven to ten years after the surgery. So the problems that the the kids are the the people in general are seeking to um, solve by moving into their perceived gender, they aren't addressed and they aren't ultimately solved and they actually do more harm. Nugent says that, and this is, I thought was a really good point. He points out that that marginalized uh, groups. This, this is the first time in in history that marginalized groups uh, have huge dollar signs on on their backs. So he says over their heads, you know, um, seventy thousand dollars for a uh, for a, a, a gender surgery to, to make a, supposedly make a woman, a, a man, uh, $70,000, like it's big bucks. And not only that, but you get into big pharma and you have hormone blockers and chemical castration and stuff like this. And uh, what makes me really sad and why this really impacted me is because we're, we're mutilating kids with, with these hormone blockers, surgeries, chemical castration, et cetera. And actually at one point, and this was, this was really frustrating to me. Um, Walsh interviews, uh, a doctor in Providence, Rhode Island, Dr. Forcier. And, and this, this doctor, Dr. Forcier, defended the use of hormone blockers and other surgical and non-surgical techniques on, on young children to, to alter their, um, their gender, to alter their gender. And when, when Walsh pointed out that she's prescribing the same exact drugs we give sex offenders to chemically ca castrate them, Forcier threatens to, she doesn't respond right away. She threatens to end the interview saying that she doesn't like where that's going and she doesn't call it that. And then what she says in response, she says, it's not what you're saying it is. She says, and I quote, it's care for kids who are not in an affirmative living situation. Friends, this is wrong, like objectively wrong. And it's only wrong, but it's tragic. You see, uh, Walsh, he, he spoke also with a, with a father and they didn't give his name. He's, he's actually, he was jailed and now he's on parole. Um, and he was fined a large sum of money. He lives in Canada for, and he was, he was, uh, fined and jailed for, and I quote, misgendering his own child. His daughter wanted to be, be referred to as a boy and he refused to do it. So they put him in jail. Um, the, and he went on to explain in this situation um, that in Canada, it's, it's criminal violence to call your child a pronoun, not according to their wishes. So, so, uh, language matters, right? Words matter. And this is a moral issue. So how do we respond? You know, um, how do we respond to this? Uh, well, I I'd say we respond with questions. Um, if, if, if someone is ill, okay, if someone is ill, we should seek to understand the, the cause in order to find a cure. And what we've done as a culture and a society is we've settled for slogans instead of asking, I think, fundamental, like, uh, driving questions. I mean, Columbo, you know, the Coco's Columbo, you can use that to find questions. I'm a boy trapped in a girl's body. What do you mean? Instead of asking that foundational fundamental question, what we've do is now we just accept slogans. And I think I said it before that it seems as the interviews went on and on. That I, th I don't think any of these experts have ever really been pressed into 
on this stuff. We just accept it. They just, they say it and people accept it. And, but, but slogans aren't adequate to, uh, to dismiss things whose, whose moral legitimacy is in question. Slogans are an attempt to dismiss the, the moral questions in general. You know, there's a, there's a presumption that these things are, are, are moral, which leads to an attitude of they're, they're like just accepted that these things are right, good, and true and beautiful. They're moral, which leads to an attitude of, of just leave the person alone. And, and, and that's a false assumption that this is just normal. And by normal, I mean moral and, and healthy. If, if it's normal, then, then everything is just fine. And we let bygones be bygones. You do you. And I think that this is really important and, and, and why the normalization of these ideas is so destructive. Once something is normalized in the culture, the moral questions are dismissed and, and they become almost completely irrelevant. You know, and, and this becomes abundantly clear as, as Walsh interviews <laughs> uh, women at like the Women's March in Washington, D.C. He asks them questions, simple questions. I mean, what is a woman? He's asked, these women are at the Women's March wearing, you know, the women's hats and, and carrying signs like my body, my choice. I am a woman, you know, and he asks them, what is a woman? And they can't define it. And then he goes like, can he, he says, hey, can girls get, uh, can, can boys get pregnant? Well, of course they can't, but not uh, not on the streets in D.C. apparently at the Women's March because you have a group of young women explaining that a man can get pregnant <laughs> if he has the parts to get pregnant is, is almost the exact words. I don't have the quote in front of me, but it's almost the exact words. And it's just like, whoa, you know, and they, and they go on to express things like like gender is fluid. It's constantly changing. And then the woman screams at him uh, from the march. If you're not here for women, we ask you to leave. And then Walsh, I mean, it's a brilliant tactic. He asks a question. What is a woman though? And and nobody can give him an answer. And then they start booing him and, you know, cussing him out. And 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 then Walsh, you know, grabs his, his mic, megaphone. And and that's where it kind of, for me, it goes off the rails a little bit. But, you know, but but friends, I said it before at the onset, like this is relativism and, and the consequences of living in a, in a post-truth culture. You know, at, at the very foundation of what people are calling the gender revolution is the idea that that we create our own reality. There, there are no objective standards, and this includes no objective reality or standards of, of sexuality and gender. You know, then this leads to the inability of, of very, very intelligent, otherwise very, very intelligent people not to be able to, to answer very simple questions like, what is a woman, you know, one of the the parts of the the video, the movie that's uh, that stands on my mind is is uh, Walsh is on the streets of Hollywood, California, and and he does some street interviews, and like these people are are defending the under the idea, and they're saying verbatim like we all have our own realities. People are asking like why are, do you care about this, and and Walsh is saying well because I I, I want to know what the truth is. Well, they ask the age old question, what is truth? And he's like, well, it, 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 it's it's what's actually true in reality. And then he asks, well, we all have our own realities. We 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 make up our own realities. And one of the interviewers actually says, do whatever makes you happy. It's true for you. It's your reality. And and then ultimately that conversation, these conversations on the streets of Hollywood, de like devolved into questioning whether the conversation is even actually happening in reality. Like, are we having this conversation? And and, and the interviewees couldn't say that they were because to do so would would kind of disprove what they were saying in the in you know the that, that we make up our own reality there's one reality friends and and we all live in it and we have to live according to the way that the that that the world has been set up that the way the way reality really is reality is the way the world really is and then notice something that when we get rid of the objective standards we also get rid of the need to justify any of it and and, and when we become the the standard when we ourselves become the standard we create our own reality and, and, and we don't need a justification for, for anything outside of our own personal preferences or feelings. And, and there are two significant issues uh, we're confronted with in, in this whole conversation, guys. And, uh, and, and one of them I wish, I wish Walsh could have pressed into more, um, but I don't think it was his project. So, so I understand why he did it. And um, the, the, the first issue, the first um, thing that we got to be concerned with is uh, this all has to do with identity. And the second has to do with authority. When, when we're the standard of all things, people define who they are according to who they believe they are. It, it, and it's completely subjective and it's ever 
changing. And this is why uh, conversations quickly get heated and, and ideas are, are labeled hate and, and failing to completely accept and encourage someone's behavior or, or even just their ideas can, can, um, can be taken as, as uh, failing to love the person or actively hating them. Uh, the, the solution to this is, is, is the gospel, friends. It's, it, the, the gospel is the great equalizer on both ends. One, we're all made in the image of God. Two, we're all sinners. And we're all fallen and we're all broken. So, so it, it places dignity on the person and that we're all made in the image of God, but it also shows that we're all broken and sinful. So as Christians, when we move into the conversation, we can have compassion, understanding that we all get stuff wrong. We're all fallen and broken apart from the grace of God. Uh, we're all confused, right? Um, Anyway, so much more on that, but that's another talk in, in, in and of itself. I don't want to go too, too, long, too much longer. And, but when we hang our, our identity on anything other than being children of God, we, we, suffer, um, we suffer confusion and, and ultimately fail and fall. Uh, today, in, instead of the gospel, people are more concerned about being accepted by the world around them and identifying themselves according to their brokenness. You know, and um, clarity on this issue, issue will, will only come as the people of God help others understand what it means to, to have been um, designed by a creator with a, with a purpose and then, and then to be saved by that creator. And, and this is where we place our identity. This is where we place our hope. This is where we place our satisfaction, our contentment, and our happiness. Um, but the, the question is this, is there an objective reality uh, that lends understanding to what women uh, or a woman really is. Of, of course there is, right? I mean, you're watching this, you're probably, if you're a Christian, you're saying, of course there is, right? And 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 this is what makes Walsh's documentary, I think, so important. People in an effort to bend reality to their own subjective proclivities are, are willing to say, I mean, literally anything in pursuit of their own ideologies. I mean, they are willing to say anything. I, I, this reminds, I'm not going to get this quote totally. I think it's Lewis who said, uh, once people stop believing in God, the problem is it, it isn't that they'll believe in nothing. Rather, the problem is that they'll believe in anything. That might be G.K. Chesterton. I'm not 100% sure, but one of the Lewis or him, like once we stop believing in, in the big picture God, it's not that we won't believe in anything. It's that we'll believe, uh, we'll believe anything. Um, and, and why is this? Well, this has to do with the second significant issue we're confronted with, uh, authority. So identity, and now authority. You know, pe people don't want to be obligated to anything or anyone uh, outside of themselves. When when I was a kid, I, I uh, my my mom used to yell at me and, and tell me to do something. And then the way I expressed it was, uh, I'm a boss. I'm the boss of my own self, you know. And for the Christian, God's word has ultimate authority in, in our lives. Our, our beliefs and actions are, are shaped by what the Bible teaches and of course, this isn't true of society. Culture is governed by uh, the ever-changing whims of, of the self and the slippery slope of, of, um, of relativism, what I described kind of earlier. And I think that this is where we should really try to bring the conversation. And this is where, if I'm offering any type of uh, critique or criticism to Walsh's documentary, um, this is where it would lie. And actually it's a critique and a criticism I have of, of a lot of just conservative commentaries. I think they fall short. You know, um, we should, we should try to bring everything back to this question. Is there a standard outside of ourselves? Is there a standard, uh, we're conforming ourselves to, and, and this is the more important question than even, uh, what is a woman? Right. The, the answer to this question will inform the that question, will inform Walsh's question. It, it may even uh, open more dialogue. And, and here's why. I think there's a, a lot of confusion in the culture today. I, uh, a lot of people, I mean, this is obvious that there's a lot of confusion in the culture. And I think a lot of people don't think it makes sense to even attach any type of moral significance to the issues related to gender um, or the issues related to sexuality or, or identity um, in general. Because, well, they don't understand that we're accountable to someone outside of ourselves with respect to these things. Remember, we're, we're, uh, we're not completely autonomous beings. Uh, you do you doesn't work. But that's the, that's the mantra of the day. That's what's carried out. People think that we're completely autonomous. We make our own, uh, we, 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 we make our own way and we do us. And then we don't have to worry about the consequences. And that's not true. We're accountable to something higher. And in my opinion, if, if, uh, if, if, if we're going to have uh, conversations with people about what a woman is or anything related to the gender revolution, we should also be pointing to something bigger and, and uh, it might actually be more productive that way. What I'd, what, I, what I'd like to have seen 
uh, Walsh do is is model this, and he, he clearly understands it. Uh, from what I understand, he's uh, Christian, at least Catholic, uh, is is my understanding. I don't know a ton about Mr. Walsh. I think uh, this, like I said, I, I respect his video here. I don't watch him regularly. Uh, he seems incredibly intelligent, so he understands what what, what this is, and um, and he does well to to constantly point the to the importance of truth. I just like to see. Uh, I just like to see him take it a step further to ultimate truth, which is the knowledge of God. Um, one thing that stands in my mind as I kind of wrap things up here, 25 minutes. Oh my gosh. Um, at a, at a school board meeting, Walsh lights up the board by, by telling them, uh, they've uh, deprived the children of truth. And, and he goes on to say, and I quote, if education isn't grounded in truth, it's worthless. And then towards the end of the film, when he, uh, when he's pressed by transgender activists as to, to why he, cares about this so much he says and i really liked this part it was harsh but he i really like it he said i care about the truth i care about children i care about women and i like how he leads in that and i think that's how we it, it's out of love that i'm expressing these things you know it's out of love that I'm, I'm trying to move into these issues so i would have liked to have seen him take it a step further though and and point out that the the real issue is whether god exists if, if god exists then he's made the, the world a certain way and and we we have to live in in that world according to god's standards not merely our own and um, in the end though after watching the documentary and, and doing some reading on this issue on my own i got some books behind me which i'll um which i'll recommend in a second um it, it, it seems like i hate to say this but it seems like we've progressed beyond any point of rational dialogue, guys. Um, pe people want to do what they want to do. And and anyone standing in their way is is going to be labeled unloving, hateful, bigoted, or one of those terms, right? Um, and I want to end with this. I, I'm going to wrap up. Um, whether, whether it be regarding doubt, uh, suicide, atheism, sexuality, or gender, uh, the confusion that we're experiencing, we need to remember this and point this out, the confusion that we experience in this world isn't from the absence of God. It's, it's due to the consequences of sin. And, and, and sin has devastating consequences. Uh, we're naive if, if we think we can restrict the impact of, uh, of our, uh, our own evil actions and the evil actions of others to ourselves. This is, this is why even a, a rational discourse seems to be fleeting, um, but we don't give up. You know, sin is, is the mutation that has twisted and distorted man from his original beauty, resulting in two conflicting aspects of man, right? Uh, man is beautiful. He's made in the image of God, but man is broken due to his rebellion. And when we think along these terms, I think things come into, uh, we, we bring clarity to the conversation, you know, and this, this reminds us yet again, that this is, is, is not about the superior, the superiority of a, of a worldview or a, a people group or a sexual orientation. Uh, I'm, I'm no better than you and, and you're no better than the, the trans woman that's struggling wrestling. It's, it's about the superior order of the superiority of the man, Jesus. You see, uh, we're all equal in that we're all sinners and, and in need of rescue. This informs how we engage. Um, this informs how we engage with, with other image bearers all the time. So when we look at people we're engaging them, we should look at them like that. We don't look at them with as, as something we disagree with. We look at them as, as somebody, someone who's made in the image of God. And, and this is something I think uh, Walsh uh, could have communicated, but he didn't. You know, but like I said, that wasn't really his project. I, I, I think I know that. And, and friends, uh, people are confused. <laughs> uh, at the end of the video, it's great. At the end of the movie... Walsh goes home and he asks his, his wife, uh, what is a woman? And then I, so I, I decided to do the same thing with my, my 12 year old daughter. Um, I asked my 12 year old daughter, what is a woman? No prompting from me. We haven't talked about this issue or the documentary. And what she said is she said, a woman is an adult girl, <laughs> right? Uh, I mean, that's right on, right? It's an adult female. You know, the, the, the world's going to be illogical around these things, guys. It, it's going to be irrational. And, and sometimes the world is going to be completely incapable of, of civil discourse. Uh, we expect that because people are in darkness, because they, they can't see clearly because of the darkness. And because they can't see clearly because of the darkness, they bump into things. Um, but but don't be confused or, or surprised. Like, this is, I guess, what I'm getting at. Don't be confused or surprised when the world is being the world. Expect it. Right. So, so if you watch Matt, if you watch Matt Walsh's, uh, what is a woman documentary, and, and I really highly recommend that you do uh, keep in mind that the, the world knows nothing about the peace of God that passes all understanding. Right. 
they don't know about the 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 about what it's like trusting a sovereign lord. And when when the world acts like the world, when you see these social scientists and these doctors, like our heart should break, yes, but we should have an understanding when they act like the world. Remember, we're not dealing with light, we're dealing with darkness. And and when darkness is is dark, we got to stay focused on our task, right? And it's to it, it's to be the light. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and in closing here, 30 minutes in yesterday, I read Second Corinthians um just in my my private time or whatever. And I was reminded by Paul that, that we recognize no one according to the flesh, right? And, and that Christ is reconciling the world to himself and he's using us as his ambassadors. We are part of the solution and, and we're to be begging on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. You know, and is that our message? Uh, this means that we, that we need to speak into these issues with clarity, compassion, and conviction. Right? We should be resolute and stand firm in the, in the truth of who we are and more importantly, who God is, and he created man, and he created woman, and he created them good. And um, with that, guys, I just want to, before I go through and check out some of your questions, uh, I have a couple books that I'd really like to recommend um, to you guys if you haven't read them on this issue, uh, well, at least peripherally, uh, Why Gender Matters by Leonard Sachs. Uh, this is a fantastic book. I highly recommend it. Um, I don't even know if the guy's Christian. It doesn't, when I'm reading it, it doesn't seem like it, but he's just, he draws out why gender matters. And he actually shows through his, his um, field, uh, the differences between genders. He, he goes through like, I mean, everything from how we learn, how we hear, how we smell. Uh, there's distinct differences in that. And I'm not saying there's not differences in the genders. There are. And there's also not a, a breadth. Um, there is, so, you know, all, not all girls act like we typically say girls act right. And they might uh, exhibit some things that boys exhibit, but it doesn't make them a boy. Um, and then, uh, why gender matters by sax does a great job. Uh, if you're looking for a more, a theological perspective, this is, uh, wonderfully made. It's uh, Protestant theology of the body by, uh, Kleinig. A uh, fantastic book. This one's a little bit slower of a read. Um, it's pretty dense, but it's it's really good if you want to come to a good theological understanding of why this stuff matters. And ultimately, I, I still believe theology is the queen of the sciences, and uh, the, our theology matters uh, more than just about anything else. So, anyways, um, Capig, uh, you're only human, which is another fantastic book. You're Capig, you're only human. And these links are being, th thank you, Harmony, for putting these links in. How your limits reflect God's design and why that's good news. Like, it's so cool. You, you, anyways, uh, Capig does a great job of pointing out that Jesus came to make us more human, not less. And uh, anyways, it's really great. And you guys probably know this one here. Carl Truman, uh, The Rise and Triumph of the Modern Self. Fantastic resource. Uh, I've read this a number of times. This one's really dense. He, can't, he just came out with a, a shorter, more condensed version, which I'm not quite done with yet. Um, so I didn't bring it. But uh, it's I highly recommend that one too. I forget the name of it off the top of my mind. But these are all great resources. There's also a, a great short guide for you parents or pastors or teachers that are wrestling through this. How do you have a conversation um, with people, especially your kids, about gender issues? It's called Gender, and Harmony's going to put a link, I hope. Gender, a conversation guide for parents and pastors by, um, by Brian Seagraves. It's S-E-A-G-R-A-V-E-S -E -E and Hunter uh, Levine. And uh, it's on. It's, I have it on Kindle. That's why I don't have it here with me. It's on my Kindle. Gender, a conversation guide for parents and pastors. Um, it, and it's a fantastic resource. A short, it's... 45 minutes to an hour read and I'm a slow reader. So um, with that guys, I, I hope that this was, this was a profitable, a profitable uh, 30 minutes. I told you it was going to go long, um, but I'm okay with that. And I, I, I hope that it went well for you guys. Uh, and I left a lot out by the way. I mean, I have, I have four pages of notes here, teeny font. And uh, there was, there was a lot of interviews that, uh, that Walsh did that I thought were really great, particularly. And I didn't mention them because there's just too much to talk about is the, the he he interviewed uh jordan peterson and and then he interviewed carl carl truman both of them are just i mean brilliant <laughs> and they brought up uh some really good points so maybe in the discussion we'll get to that so i'm gonna scroll through here it looks like there's actually a lot of comments 
excuse me, and and see what we can do for the next maybe 30 minutes or so. Um, <clears throat> this is uh, <laughs> Stan, a universal timeless, errorless answer, a girl who has attained puberty. I think uh, that's a good one. You know, I definitely think that's a good one. <clears throat> that's like what Matt Walsh's wife says. Uh, it's funny. He asks Jordan Peterson that question. What is a woman? And Jordan Peterson's response is, why don't you marry one and find out? It was really funny. Peterson, you know how he, I don't know if you guys, like, I, I, um, I every once in a while I'll come across a Jordan Peterson video and I don't follow him a ton, but I, I do respect his thinking. And uh, he, like, he's so uppity. It's so great. Why don't you marry one and find out? It was really funny. Um, but uh, Peterson draws the distinction. I'm going to see if I can look at my notes real quick on this because I really do want to kind of hit hit on this um, where <clears throat> he talks. I'm not going to be able to find it quickly enough, but he uh, he talks about how behavior. Oh, um, you know, uh, we should talk about he says gender. The term gender is almost meaningless now. And what we should be doing is talking about temperament, you know, um, and masculine. Uh, there are masculine girls, there are feminine boys, and, and we, we're on a spectrum in that regard. And that's something actually the movements point points to and kind of stems out of. This depravity stems out of something that is true, right? And and we can be stereotypical in our thinking about boys and girls. And there has been there have been abuses, you know, that have happened uh, where you know you want that masculine son, and you don't like that he's playing with dolls, so you know you overcorrect to that, and that's not good, you know. So it's good to recognize that part of it. And, and Peterson does a little bit of that, um, but then he asks, he, he says that we have masculine girls and feminine boys, but what are we going to do? Are we going to, are we going to carve them up, you know, or are we going to address the issues? And I thought that was really powerful. Um, so he puts, he juxtaposes temperament versus gender. And he just talks about how the scare tactics in academia are working. And then uh, there's basically no good research. Uh, you're not able to do good research on this. And, and um, Walsh interviewed a few uh, academics that we agree with. I mean, he, uh, he interviewed a couple of doctors. I didn't mention them just because we agree with them, but he interviewed some experts in the field who actually speak the truth and support what we have to say. So it was really good. Um, never in a million years, did I think there'd be, there'd ever be a debate over reality. But then again, look how easily the Kings kept the re, uh, return to bail. Nothing. Wins. This is true. I mean, this guys, let's just be, let's just be real, right? This is, this is, uh, this has been the, uh, What's what's Coco call it? Uh, relativism is the primeval, prime, primeval sin, or I forget what he says. There's a solid ground somewhere on relativism by uh, Coco, and he he does a great job pointing this out. That relativism has has been from the beginning. Did God really say? Right? Did God really say? Is is the uh, is the lie? It's the lie that we're believing now. It's the same question that we're asking. Um, so nothing has changed ultimately. Um, now one of the things the documentary points out by way of this, I just want to mention, and, um, this is really great. This has come up in my research on LGBTQ stuff and my presentations now that I do. And I, I have now a presentation on homosexuality and LGBTQ stuff that I present to, to churches and, and everything. If you guys want to have me out and present, I'd love to come to your churches and do that. And, uh, you can contact us through our webpage, but a lot of research went into uh, a lot of reading into these things. And when you start looking at how these movements started they're on corrupted data and i'm just going to say it guys uh formulated and put forth by perverted men um oftentimes uh and and this is where the data is coming from and it's it's not good it's it's really kind of disturbing um so anyways uh this video touches on that very briefly towards the end what is a woman by matt walsh you guys should check it out um the alphabet people would then ask the question, what is a girl? Yeah, you know, um, the alphabet people is what uh, D Dave Chappelle refers to the LGBTQ plus people as the alphabet people. I don't I don't really, I, I try to avoid that kind of language, just alphabet people, just real quick, Stan. Like, you know, um, it's it rhetorically powerful in our circles maybe, but it, if, if I say that in to, to people that are actually uh, struggling and wrestling, I might get dismissed, but your point is still valid. Uh, they would just ask, what is a girl, you know, and well, a girl is somebody who's a girl and, and we need to, we need to get to the bottom of this words matter, right? Language matters, which was uh, one of my first concerns that I brought up. 
Um, all right. Hello from Bakersfield, California. What's up, man? Uh, Bakersfield. That's not too far from me. Uh, good to see you. Good to have you here. I'm in uh, Ventura County. Um, notice the links, guys. There's also a ton of STR uh, links. I didn't even mention um, Alan Schleeman uh, has a great blog, Does Gender Identity Matter? Um, uh, let's see. I, I think I can. Let's see if I can scroll down. Amy Hall has a fantastic uh, blog. Uh, you can erase. What is it? Um, shoot. Uh, you can erase gender, but you can't. You, you can't erase gender, but you can sure try. Uh, you should check that out. Amy and Greg just recently had a brief discussion on uh, an STR asks, which are all great resources. If you guys have more questions about this, uh, ask STR asks and they'll, uh, they'll make sure to get to your question um, on that podcast. Uh, we've got tons of resources here at str.org. Um, a must watch. Yeah. You know what? A must watch is right. I, I do. I think, I think this is this documentary is is a must watch. I liked it because oftentimes when I watch the like, I'm just gonna be honest. I sometimes get like snark that doesn't need to be there from the conservative crowd. Like we can be snarky, and I don't like I don't want to I don't want to be snarky. I just want to have the conversation and I want to love people, uh, kind of where they're at, and um, not sacrifice truth. Love is not acceptance, right? <laughs> um, so, but, uh, but, uh, sometimes it's snark in the conservative stuff and it, it wasn't there in this video a ton. There was a little bit of it, but not a ton. And I appreciate Walsh kind of, he could have, he could have been way, way more snarky, way more sarcastic, way more. I mean, some of the stuff that people are saying was ridiculous and he just, I thought he did really well. He just sat there and kind of looked at this expert and was like, like the, the, the presser from the university of Tennessee, he says, but you're an expert in this field. Like, this is what you do. And the expert's like, like define terms. You define these things. And he's like, yes. So what's a woman? A woman is somebody who identifies as a woman. And he's like, and, and he just like, he didn't lose his mind or anything. He just was like this, like he kind of just shook his head at him and was, how can you not see this? And then they kind of got into it a little bit. I really appreciated it. It is a must watch. Um, an adult female human. That's, that's uh, it seems pretty basic. What that's four words. An adult female human. Uh, that is a woman, yes. Um, let's see here. New reformed apologetics. Thanks for tuning in, man. I'm not sure if I've seen you on here before. Most of the video was just asking questions, not your average documentary. Yes, and and that's why I think this documentary is so good because I think there's power in questions. Uh, oftentimes what we do is we rush in the conversations, whether it be about the existence of God, the problem of evil, or the, the what is a woman. We run in with all this evidence, all this evidence. And here, I'm going to prove my position. Well, what, let's just chill. Let's not take on the burden of proof. Let's ask strategic questions. What do you mean by that? How'd you come to that conclusion? And can you clarify something for me? Right? That's Columbo right there. Tactics by, by Coco. Uh, fantastic resource. If you haven't read it, you've got to. But you just ask questions. And this is exactly what Walsh did. He just asked questions and kind of let the people answer for themselves. And, and some of the people, the first, I didn't write her name down because I, I don't know, maybe, I don't know what I was doing at the beginning. But the first like 10 minutes, he was interviewing a, a, a psychologist or a psychiatrist or a counselor of some kind. And she was the first interview in the documentary. And she was really sweet. Like I really liked this lady, you know, and I was like, oh, this, she's so great. And then at the end, he asks, what's a woman? And she goes, and, and she goes, I don't know. I'm not a woman. And I'm just like, oh man. Cause she was like making sense. She was like really affirmative to Matt Walsh. Like they had a great conversation. I mean, no clarity was offered, but they had a good conversation at least uh, as well uh, as far as um, being polite and, and con congenial. And you, you could witness what it, what it looks like to kind of ask some strategic questions, kind of show for the observer, because let's remember in a conversation, especially like um, a lot of conversations that we have, they don't happen in private. They haven't, they happen in public. So a lot of people that are that are benefiting or that are learning from the conversation aren't participants in the conversation. They're just people looking on. So we got to remember that people are watching. And anyways, Walsh did a good job. Uh, not your average documentary. It was really good. Really well done. Um, all right. Paul, man, how's it going, man? Louisiana. Oh, man, I've got uh, crawfish on my mind. 
uh, bring me to Louisiana so I can eat some crawfish with you, man. This is like, I don't know why I've just been craving them. Like, anyways, it's good to see you. Thanks for tuning in. Um, it is uh, the reforms apologetic, new reform reformation apologetics. It is Gnosticism. There's a sense of Gnosticism here. Um, that's a good, that's a really good point to draw out. Um, and that Gnosticism kind of undergirds uh, a lot in our, in our culture. Um, let's see here. Links, links, links. Question. All right. Here's a question. What better way to document uh what the woke believe yeah i agree this isn't actually a quite i think it's rhetorical but yes i agree i think that that letting people express their views by asking questions is a fantastic way to document what people believe and i like, i honestly i'm interested like I'm, I'm thinking about i don't know how i can do this maybe they'll maybe they'll put the documentary up for sale i kind of wish that they were i'm not like a huge conservative news guy so i don't i don't subscribe i wouldn't otherwise subscribe to um the daily wire Apart from this, uh, this documentary, I, I I hope that they make the documentary available for purchase, and then I'd like to share it with my family. If I buy it, maybe I can watch it with my family. My my brother is coming out uh, to visit me, and, and I'd like to. And we don't agree along ideological lines. We don't agree on, on worldview lines uh, almost anywhere. And uh, I'd just like to hear what he has to say because it just seems so obviously false. And not only that, but it seems so obviously harmful. And destructive um that i don't know how he'd respond i would like to get a anyways if you're if you are a liberal or if you are somebody who disagrees with me i'd love to hear in your con in the comment section uh if you've seen it what your thoughts were because i yeah yes the truth shall set, set you free hey standard hey natural um oh you're back again natural gee Good to see you here. I'm glad that you keep tuning in. You're a regular. It's fantastic. Thank you so much. Expert <laughs> question mark. Uh, laugh out loud. Yeah, well, they are an expert. You know, they're published in the thing. The, the issue is, and this came up in the documentary as um, the other people were, the the people that we agree with. Um, let's see. I, I, I wrote a note here um, where I said, finally, I, I put down like, finally, clarity. Finally. Um Gets, it said it gets gets worse as he goes to university. Finally, sanity. Miriam uh, Grossman, she's a medical doctor, and uh, and she she does a good job kind of pointing a lot of this this stuff out. But she uh, she she points out, and one other young young woman also points out. I don't have her name down here. I didn't take any notes from her, but uh, an Asian woman. She points out that uh, it's impossible to get published in this field if you don't toe the ideological line. Now. Um, because the transgender activists are so gnarly. Um, man, I wish I, I wish I took notes on it. I didn't. I don't think I did at least uh, of what she was saying. Um, there's a lot to do. We, we, we barely scratched the surface. I was barely able to scratch the surface. I'm going to turn this whole thing into, I think, a, a whole talk. Um, but yeah, but they are, but in order to be an expert, in this field, you can't be a contrarian. Like you have to toe the line, and and that's a problem in academia, guys. That's that's a huge problem. That that should uh, concern us. All right, let's see here. Yeah, uh, th this is Lupron, the uh, new Reformation apologetics. Not to mention that Lupron, which is used to castrate sex offenders, is used. Yeah, we, I mentioned that, and not to mention Lupron is uh, incredibly lucrative from a a uh, uh, um, big pharma perspective. I mean, th th these people aren't creating these things for, for the betterment of society. Let's be real. Uh, there's money to be made. Um, yeah, let's see here. Um, one cannot transform from one gender to another gender. Words matter, language matters. This is true. Absolutely. Thank you, uh, Railroad22. This is true. It's not the way that it works. Um, Carl Tarkison, here we are. A woman is, is, is a man with a womb. We also have male and female. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure what you're getting at there. Um, a woman is a male with a womb. Well, I, I mean, a woman has a, a, a completely different set of DNA, completely different, uh, different chromosomes. I mean, uh, one of the things I find most convincing is, is if uh, in, in, in 500 years, none of us are going to be here. We're going to be dead and buried. 
And if you dig up my bones, you're going to be able to tell if I'm a man. Now, now I could be a, a transgender woman, right? I could identify as a transgender woman. The, one of the first doctors, Dr. Forcier in Providence, I think was her. No, um, shoot. I don't want to. Oh, Marcy, Marcy Bowers. She was a surgeon that performs these, these surgeries. She, she actually said, she says, identify as a woman, but have a transgender history. When, when, when he is dead and buried, if they dug up his bones, they will see that he's a male, regardless of the surgeries that he's had, regardless of how he identifies. Like This is reality, and we don't get to define these terms. Um, I think it's important to stand firm on this. Um, Congress is working on a bill for those who are operated on will be able to use the doctor's in 30 years i'm not sure what uh justice what 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 that bill is but there's lots of stuff going on in congress actually uh walsh interviews um a congressman let's see if i can uh he's from california of course mark takano and he talked about the equality act and he cut the interview short he's the only one who like took off the mic and was like i'm done and it happened in the context of trying to talk about bathroom bills and stuff like this. And it's, it is, it is a uh, interesting, what we're seeing. Interesting is the benign word. It, it's sad and destructive what we're seeing. Cause, cause for the longest time people are saying, Oh, there's no people. This is what this Congressman tried to defend people who want to use men who want to use a female bathroom because they think they're a woman aren't going to harm women. That's what they say because they genuinely feel this way. No, 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 that's not proving true. And actually we're seeing this in the context of prisons now where we're seeing that that men are identifying as women and being sentenced to prison and women's prisons. And now women are getting raped and impregnated by these men. Like this is, this is not good. This is, this is evil. And uh, anyways, and I don't use that word lightly guys. I don't toss it around. You know, I'm not a, a cessation. I'm not a cessationist. I'm not a sensationalist, right? I'm not, being hyperbolic, but there's something evil. When you, when you watch this documentary and I, I want you to watch Dr. Marcy Bowers, she's the first, she's a surgeon and she denies that there's any ill effects. She denies that there's any risks to these surgeries where Nugent, who's the guy who's interviewed towards the end of the, the documentary, he had a, a, um, a, 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 a gender realignment surgery. He, uh, sh she <laughs> had a gender realignment surgery where they took, they took skin from her, her forearm and created, um, a, a male part. And, uh, he's, he says he outright, he's like, I'm going to die. Like, I don't have much time left because of the number of infections that I've, I, I get. And he wasn't aware of any of the risks. And I guess 64% of those surgeries carry or result in very, very high risk situations with infections and, uh, dead the flesh dying and sepsis and and constantly going back to the doctor and trying to fix stuff and and this woman didn't didn't isn't recognizing any of it and she she actually Walsh asked her pretty directly like do you think it's okay for children to making these decisions like don't you think something is wrong with children minors making these decisions she's like no absolutely not like children should be able to do what they want um it was it, some of the conversations were amazing we didn't have time to get into all the ins and the outs but watch it watch the documentary guys it's really great um Let's see here. Uh, it was shameful. It was shameful for Congress to approve this, uh, a Supreme Court justice who could not define it. That was the very last clip of this movie during the credits. They showed this, uh, that qu line of questioning during the confirmation hearing where the Supreme, the Supreme Court justice nominee was, was asked, can you define a woman? And she's, it, it's interesting because she said, I cannot, I'm not a biologist. And now I think the next question out of the, the questioner's mouth should have been, so you're saying that it has to do with biology. That's the question I would have asked. I would have said it has to do with biology then and, and then see how she responded. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's beyond me, but, but I also feel for the judge, like she, I, I, I don't know. I don't know this for a fact, but I, I just like, maybe I give people the benefit of the doubt. But she knew, I, I think, I think we know what a woman is. I think we know what a woman is. I think she knows what a woman is. She's obviously incredibly smart. People don't get to that point in their careers without being really bright. Like they're bright people. They're hard workers. Like, and, and to be asked that, and know what stinks is that I feel like she, she knows she can't say what she really believes. 
That's what concerns me. What concerns me is that we have a Supreme Court justice for the United States, a nominee for the highest court in the land, scared, intimidated by cultural pressures to answer what is a woman, a question, what is a woman accurately? That's where my concern lies uh, more than this woman actually not answering the question. Like, this is not good. Like, we've gotten to a place that is not good. Um, and this is a point I, I've made over and over again, guys. We need to become resolute now. We need to become resolute now. We are going to stand with truth. As things get more and more difficult, as, as time progresses and, and, and these things become more and more prevalent, we have to become resolute now, right now, that we are going to persevere through it no matter what. We can't wait for these things to come to us. We can't wait for things to get more difficult to decide that we're going to persevere. We won't last. That's why, like, for example, if you're into home defense or something like this, you train now for the hypothetical situation that may or may not happen in the future. You train now so you're equipped. You don't wait until something happens to get trained. It's too late. So we need to be training our mind, becoming equipped. That's why we do things that stand the reason, like to the point. That's why we have uh, STR University. Go through those. These are free resources for you. Um, str.org backslash training. You know, get trained. Uh, get equipped now. Not not next year, not next month, now. And and then we, so when these things start coming to our door, and this is why also at Stand the Reason and, and, and many other great apologetics resources out there from other places, that's why we focus on the issues of the day and we try to look forward in, into time to bring down to us now the issues that we think are coming. Uh, many of them are the same: gender, sex, uh, sex stuff, abortion, um, persecution, stuff like this, uh, contentment in Christ, importance of the church, stuff like this are, are really, really important to get resolute on now that we will not bend, and then we get equipped. Um, anyways, yeah, the Congress does a lot. I, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not super stoked on Congress. Uh, let's see here. A really good and pertinent read, Abuse of Language, Abuse of Power by... I'll check this out. Um, thanks for the recommendation. I always love it when you guys recommend me stuff um, because I often look for uh, new resources. Um, I'm just going to jot this down in case I can't find language. I can't find it later. And it's, I know that name, Joseph. Awesome. And uh, thanks for that. I'll uh, check it out. Let's see here. I'm going to see if there's any questions down here. And uh, you guys have been incredible. Broken indeed. Uh, Scott, this is a good comment here. This was a scary documentary, to say the least, with, uh, with a newborn daughter. Um, I worry for her future. Get your kids out of public school into good churches and make, dude, make sure you you show them how much love you how much you love them. The, the right there, Scott, man, you killed it. Amazing. This is right. He Scott here is right on. Uh, I I hate to say this because I know how difficult this is, and sometimes it's just it's it's hard because we're asking like get get your kids out of public school. If you want to affect the public schools, it's not going to be through protests online, going to the school board. Like those things are important. They they might influence sometimes but if you really want to hit them hit, hit them where it hurts and affect for change for for the curriculum for for everything that's going on in public schools get your kids out because because uh because butts and seats equal correlates to dollars dollars is is where it hurts and we're seeing it now for a number of reasons but pretty it's a mass exodus on public education i think we're going to see some stuff change not necessarily according to worldview lines but just how the government seeks to educate our kids but i i think that you were right on here get your kids out of public school uh, you get sewed into a really good, solid church. And that has not just great Bible teaching, like great Bible teaching is central, but also is is, is keen on building a good Christian community uh, because that's going to be important as the days be, the days are particularly evil is what Paul says, right? The devil is prowling around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour and there's protection in numbers. There's safety in numbers. And as we join together in our small little communities, this is... um. Oh, uh, right. No, that's Truman. Um, live not by lies. Dreyer. He makes this point in the last maybe third of his book, Live Not by Lies, that it's going to be the Christian, little small Christian communities that are going to really help us out. But get, get your kids out of public school, get into a church, and then show them how much you love them. Show them what true love is. Um, 
and great, great comments, Scott. Thanks for that. I really appreciate that. That's great. Um, let's see here. We shouldn't cover these topics and, and give them more oxygen. Why study the depth of Satan? Let's focus on the gospel, which is the antidote. To <laughs> yeah, I, uh, why wouldn't we, why wouldn't we address these issues? These, these are the issues. These are, these are the prevailing and winning ideologies of the day. Uh, I, I, I see, I see a, a pattern in scripture of Paul certainly going in to, for example, the Areopagus, you know, and, and debating these things and standing firm for truth. Like we're not called to just let the culture, I mean, just to completely uh, degenerate into, you know, uh, moral, complete moral depravity. Uh, we should be, we should be light. That's what it means to be a light on a hill, right? That's, that's Jesus's parable. Like we're going to be shining that light into the world, you know, and loving others, standing firm um, in the gospel. The gospel is important. The gospel is central, but we need to be bringing the gospel to the culture, you know, um, and, and we have to cover these topics. These, these are the issues that are, are winning the day. You know, and then the, the gospel is not so simple anymore. Let's just be honest. Uh, the gospel is not so simple. Um, so I'd have a lot of questions for you, HWD71. Uh, I'd, uh, I'd I'd push back at you, obviously, a little bit. You know, what do you mean by the gospel? You know, we shouldn't cover these topics and just give give more oxygen. This It's not giving oxygen. We're, we're, we're providing counter arguments and, and shining the, the, the light of the gospel on them. We're shining the light of the truth. If you, in the talk, I was very clear about that, is the one of the main issues. The first one I, I brought up was identity. The second, authority. Both have direct correlation and uh, substance in the gospel, right? Our identity is found in who we are uh, because of the gospel. And then our uh, the authority... Uh, is the word of God, which is made true through the gospel. So anyways, I appreciate the comment though. Um, let's see here. Let's see if, uh, if there's any questions. Sorry if I skipped your comments, but I, I we're, we've already gone an hour, which is crazy. Um, let's see here. Let's see if there's any uh, secularism is why there's... <laughs> This is an interesting comment. Uh, secularism is why there is nonsense. You know, Christians can be nonsensical too, <laughs> but I, I know what you're getting at. You know, when when you start getting rid of God, I mean, that kind of relates back to the C.S. Lewis or G.K. Chesterton quote. I can't remember which one said it, but when we, you know, when we stop believing God, it's not so much that we won't believe in anything, but we'll believe in anything. You know, um, so uh, yeah, is this guy's name? This guy's name is Noise, like a loud one, N-O-Y-E-S. Uh, so, yeah. Um, divine hiddenness certainly doesn't uh, doesn't help. I don't know what that comment's in relation to, but uh, I'd be happy to talk about it. Um, I don't see... I don't see God hidden, <laughs> like at all. Divine hiddenness is often something that's brought up in the context of the problem of evil or or something like that. Like, where is God? Like, there's no proof of God. And I see evidence of God everywhere. Um, I see him in my own life. I see him, uh, I, I see him in, in the world around me. I see him in the, uh, in the conversion of, of souls. I see him uh, in the building of his church. I see him in, in his word. I see him all over the place. Um, Let's see here. Any questions? I want to take some. I want to see if I can end end everything on answering a question here. Harmony, feel free to text me if uh, you may have already. I haven't checked um, if there's a if there's a question. Um, let's see. I'm glad that you guys are all like interacting with each other too. Uh, what is a woman? Thank you for answering my comment giving me something to think about good that's a dude that's my that's my hope um you know h h is that howard hwd 71 uh thank you for answering my comment you've given me something to think about you know i that that's that's all i can ask for that's all any of us can ask for i like this is the this is the point i'll end on this because i don't see any any real questions i still have my text here so harmony if, if you see something i should be answering my, my main goal here, I don't, isn't to, to prove a point or to win an argument or to, you know, one up somebody. That's not my, my project. I'm not interested in that. I'm just interested in doing life with people and being real. 
um, and wrestle through this stuff together. That's why like, I don't mind being pressed into, um, you know, I, I like it. I like the challenge of it. I think we all should. And, uh, and I just want to p- throw some stuff out there for people to think about the chew on. Right. And, and the same is true for me. I like walking away with a limp, so to speak. That's what Coco would say. He'd say we'll put a stone in somebody's shoe, something to think about and be, be open-minded in that. And I'm willing to hear, uh, criticizing, uh, criticizing, uh, comments. I'm willing to, to lean into my own worldview. That's what got me to Christianity from atheism. You know, I started to, to actually ask like a lot of fundamental questions about reality and then live according to the way the world really is. And then it leans me out of atheism and towards Christianity. Um, and I mean, ultimately it came through, uh, through the Holy spirit, but, uh, you know, God saves people, but that's my goal is I just want to, I just want to wrestle through life with people, people who I agree with people I don't agree with. I want to talk about hard issues. I want to uh, shine light on them. Not, not more heat. Like I'm done with the heat. I'm, I don't want to. I don't want to spread that kind of stuff. I just want to have a, a good conversation with people. So, um, anyways, hey guys, you know what? It has been an hour and five minutes. You guys are fantastic. Thank you guys so much for persevering through like 30 minutes kind of of content and then the 30 minute discussion. Uh, it was it was twice as long as it normally is. I hope it was valuable, profitable for you. Uh, if you can go out and watch the documentary, even if you disagree, especially if you disagree with me watch it with like an open mind and then offer open Chris's not that you wouldn't, I'm not saying that you're closed minded or whatnot, but just like put the, put on the other side. Cause I'm trying to put on the other, I'm trying to put on the other side's thinking when watching this documentary and it's still not making sense to me. It just doesn't make sense to me. Um, and I wonder if I have some blind spots, you know, I don't think, I don't think I do. Otherwise I'd try to get rid of them, but if maybe I do, so watch it uh, su- support, uh, Matt Walsh and, um, the daily wire by actually paying for it. Don't pirate it. It's illegal. It's bad. And it's good work is worthy, uh, to be paid for. Um, with that guys also remember to go to str.org tons and tons of resources on this stuff or Alan Schleeman has, has a ton of content, um, on gender issues, on homosexuality issues, LGBTQ plus stuff. Um, uh, you know, lean in the, 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 uh, Amy Hall has a bunch of stuff. Coco, of course, has a bunch of stuff. I've written a little bit on it. Um, we're always open to, to coming and speaking at your churches or conferences or wherever you'd want us, your businesses. Uh, if you, if you're interested in that, to see what it would take to get, to get myself or one of the other speakers out there, make sure you go to str.org, click the training tab in the training section. You'll see links to our bios and our available topics, and then how to get in touch with Darcy, who, uh, schedules us and we would love to come out and and uh talk on these issues so with that guys i think that's all the announcements that's everything oh reality conference i gotta mention this because it's really important reality conference i, I time is flying but the next one is in just over two and a half months it's going to be um in orange county at calvary chapel costa mesa it sells out every single year reality apologetics dot com uh it's the reality student apologetics conference not just for students but if you're coming bring some students because they could really uh benefit from it this year we're hitting up uh deconversion stuff it's going to be a really really great conference so uh reality apologetics it's going to sell out you can register now uh you save money if you register now and you don't re- take the risk of not being able to get there i'm not just saying that to sell tickets we're going to sell out we always sell this one out so anyways with that uh thanks for providing that link harmony right there it's there and um, you guys are uh, you guys are fantastic. Thank you so much for your patience. Thanks for being willing to, to persevere over an hour with me. And I hope to see you in two weeks right here on To The Point. I'm John Noyes for Stand The Reason. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.